vlog. I am never going to be a doctor and that's it. Hello, welcome to my channel if you haven't seen my face before, but if you have and you're one of my 100 subscribers, thank you so much. I honestly appreciate all of you so much. I think I might bake a cake or something to celebrate. I don't know. So today I'm going to be talking about my pre-med experience at BU, why I personally dropped, and just some tips and stuff that I've learned along the way that I think will actually help you if it's something that you want to do. Okay, I'm going to need you to listen to me right now. Look me in the eyes. Listen to the statement that I'm making. If you don't actually see yourself pursuing the medical path in the future, you're not going to do it. Let me explain. This program is so incredibly challenging and honestly, it's horrible. It's a horrible experience. No matter who you are, you're not gonna enjoy it. You're not gonna enjoy the intro level courses for sure. Like that's for sure. You're probably gonna enjoy the higher level courses if, it's, if it is something you're interested in, but uh, freshman year of pre-med, you're definitely not gonna love. If you don't actually want it, like if you don't want it, you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna survive. Um, you're not gonna want to survive in this program if it's not actually something you want. For example, let us let me just talk about my experience real quick. I, at one point, really did think that I wanted to pursue medicine and it was kind of like what was expected of me, to put it that way, by family and friends. I mean, you know the drill, it's like how it is for a lot of people. So I just kind of went with it. I was like, you know what, Let me let me just see. Uh, first semester, I was starting to get a little doubtful. I got so incredibly miserable. I was crying every day. I It got to the point where I couldn't do chemistry without crying. I just wanted to give you an idea of my crying problem. So here's some clips. Hey vlog, <laughs> I am never going to be a doctor and that's it. I have to go to my chem lab at 8 a.m. tomorrow, even though I slept three hours last night because I was studying for chemistry. <laughs> I literally hate chemistry. I hate it. I hate it so much. I'm probably gonna live under a bridge, but it's okay because, you know, living under a bridge, that's like, you have shelter, I guess, and like, you can make some friends under the bridge. Like, it doesn't seem that bad of an option right now because I literally can't do chemistry anymore. To give you an idea, I wasn't failing. I wasn't even close to failing. Like, I wasn't performing at the top of my class, that's for sure, but it is something that I could continue doing and pass and, you know, be okay. Second semester, things got a little bit harder. I still wasn't close to failing, but I genuinely couldn't find joy in anything else in my life because I was just focused on how miserable the pre-med track was making me, me personally. Um, so I was like, okay, Anna, let's, let's analyze this. Let's, let's figure out what's going on because there has to be a reason why you're so much more miserable than other people that you know taking the same classes. So obviously everyone's miserable, but some people more than others. And I was just thinking and I was like, do I actually want to pursue medicine or have I just been saying it because it's what is expected of me? And it took a lot of thinking I took the whole second semester to think about that. And then once we got quarantined, I had a lot more time with myself and just my thoughts. And I did what I thought I would end up doing, which I've been a psychology major this whole entire time. So I just decided to pursue psychology. Let me talk about things that I observed in the pre-med program and what things that I think you should and shouldn't do. It's not impossible to have a social life. However, if you're someone who wants to be at the top of your class or to not just pass, but like pass, you know, and like perform well compared to your peers, it's going to be really hard to have a social life. It's gonna be really hard to have that stereotypical college experience that everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are looking for. If you wanna, if you wanna perform very, very well, if you have very high standards for what you want, 
for how you want to perform, I would say scrap the idea of having a an amazing social life. Obviously, I'm not saying that you're going to be alone every day and like you won't have friends. Like I'm definitely not saying that. For you, if you're pre-med, a lot of your friends will probably be pre-med too. So you're going to be going through it together. So I'm not saying that you won't have friends, but I'm saying that like your academics are definitely going to be a priority and you're not gonna be partying Thursday through Sunday, that's for sure. Your intro courses, such as Chemistry 101, whatever the intro level course for bio is. I'm just gonna talk about specifically chemistry um, because I think it really, it's the class that kind of sets you up for pre-med and it's the most pre-med type class, I guess. Um, when it comes to like describing what pre-med is like, chemistry 101 is definitely a good sneak peek to how it's going to be. Um, it's definitely a weed out course. Uh, it's not like they want you to fail. I guess they want you to do well, but they don't make it easy. They want... A lot of people drop out. Like a lot of people drop out of pre-med. A lot of people dropped out for a semester. Just be prepared to be really, really tested because the point of these courses is to weed out either the students who aren't prepared for the amount of work it needs or students who don't actually want to pursue medicine and being in this chemistry course will definitely make you realize if you want to do it or not. One time we got a 61%, 61% average and our professor in the email said that it was a really good average. I'm going to tell you how I did well despite failing almost every test that we had throughout the semester. I got perfect lab grades. It wasn't easy, but I knew that it's what I had to do because I was like, okay, Anna, realistically, you already failed the first quiz. That doesn't, that probably means you're not going to do amazingly on the next ones. So let's think of options. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get perfects on all of my lab grades. And if I don't get close to a perfect, like that's unacceptable. So I made that goal, the, goal in my head. I would spend so much time on my labs to make sure that every detail was correct. I ensured the fact that I would get a good grade. And I did, I got very good grades in my labs. And your lab grades, if you're taking chem with lab, which if you're going to be you, you have to, it's that's a blessing my lab saved my grade go to office hours i know everybody says this oh my god you're probably so annoyed i didn't go to office hours like at all i maybe went twice and one of them was um for a lab that i had a question on so i literally like did not go for my quizzes and i feel like if i went i would have done a lot better for bu at least if you go to office hours like there's a lot of uh tas in there that switch out so like every two hours there'll be a new person um or one hour i'm i don't really remember but you can sit there literally for hours and just work on problems and whenever you need any question answered there's someone there that can help you so that was really nice that one time that i went i wish i went another time because it probably would have helped me but the thing about it is it's hard to like drag yourself to office hours but if you actually do I think it's a really smart thing to do. If your university is posting some kind of worksheet or practice worksheet online for you to practice, uh, do it um, because it's probably gonna look exactly like the quiz or test or whatever it is you're gonna have because you can expect those kinds of problems to be on your assessments. Get study buddies. A lot of time you will make friends that are also in pre-med that's just how it goes. Whatever program you are in, you're probably going to make friends in the same program. I think working together, like not even working together, going somewhere like a library together just keeps both of you so, or a group of you, so accountable for the work you're doing and you're going to get shit done. And I, I find it, it really depends on the day. Like I work better alone, I would say. But when I went to the library and stuff with like a group of people or like one other person, it did keep me accountable. And you know, in the library, you can't really talk. So we were doing our own work at the same time. 
and we got a lot done, especially during final season. So find some people that you can go to the library together, get a lot of work done, and then, you know, hang out afterwards or whatever it is you want to do. Use all the resources that are available for you. If you actually want to pursue medicine and you're doing it for a reason, don't get discouraged. I know that's so much easier said than done, but just don't, don't slack off. If it's something that you really want to do in your future, you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices, especially when it comes to social life and free time and watching TV and napping. You need to make the sacrifices if it's something you actually want to do. And I really believe that you can if you actually want to pursue medicine and I believe in you and you can do it if you need support or if you have any other specific questions. I think I kind of went over pretty general things in this video, but um, I'm always open to answering questions. My Instagram is down below or you can just comment and I'll answer you as soon as I can. So, um, yeah, I hope this video gave you some information. I think what I said applies to BU a lot, but I'm sure that you will have a similar experience at another college. Once again, thank you so much. If you're one of my 100 subscribers now, I can't believe it. Um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. You gotta focus on what's real, man.